In this video, I'll show you how to use voice threads as an alternative to discussion boards. In my classes, I like to do a mix of discussion boards and voice threads because I get tired of the traditional discussion boards and just reading long threads. So voice thread is nice because students can record themselves um, as if they were responding to your discussion board prompts. So it's just a nice way um, to change things up. It's also nice because you have access to VoiceThread with, through UNCW and you can access it through Canvas, which makes it super easy to use. So to get started, I'll show you an example from my class and then I'll show you how to create one in Canvas. For example, students had to read a chapter from a book and then I provided questions for them to respond to. So to create um, the gray screen, I just did this in PowerPoint. Um, and you can upload a slide and I'll show you how to do that in, in just a minute. But um, so I provided three prompts that I wanted students to respond to. If students are ready to respond. They click on this icon. It looks like a speech bubble with a plus sign. And it gives them options for different ways to respond. I always tell my students my pre preferred method um, for them responding is the audio recorder, which is the microphone. They could also do a video response if they wanted to. Every once in a while, I'll have students respond via text um, where you they can type in their comment. I try to discourage it because the point of me doing a voice thread is to try um, innovative ways for them to uh, engage with the material, but they'll let me know that they had trouble accessing the audio recorder or the video recorder. So it, it really is about you know, one or two when I do this activity, so I'm okay with that. You'll see the initials to the side on the left-hand um, side of the screen. When a student has submitted their response, it will show as their initials, or if they decide to upload a picture for their icon, like you can see mine at the top, um, it will show their picture. So I'm not going to click on one because when you hover over it, it shows the student's names. But just know it, you'll see a long list of initials going down the side, and this is a way you can tell who's responded. You can also have students engage with each other. So for, let's say, this first student responded, um, the next student could click on that icon and respond back to that student. So you can make it interactive where if you keep the... Um, the traditional discussion board of give your post and then respond to appear, you can still do that in VoiceThread. One thing that I like about VoiceThread is I can hit play. You see the play button in the bottom right hand corner. I'm sorry, bottom left hand corner. It will start with student one and it will continuously move through each of the students. Um, this is really nice. So if I'm at home and I'm doing laundry or something meaningless, I can still have this playing and I'm listening to them um, and I may stop and take notes or um, you know whatever jot down things but it's nice that it keeps going and then you can also click on the this bar at the bottom if you want to jump to different students you could do that too so if I um, wanted to hear somebody repeat I could click down here or I could just click on their initials and play it again now I'll show you how to use VoiceThread inside Canvas. So you'll see I've gone into my classes page and at the bottom I've just created a new module just labeled example. So I'm going to click on the add button because I want to add content. I'm going to drop down the menu and select external tool. So from here I can scroll down. These are all different um, tools that are you can embed in Canvas. So that's pretty nice too. So here's VoiceThread. Click on that. Add item. Now it's showing me, okay, there's a link attached. I can click on it. And it's going to pull VoiceThread up embedded in Canvas. It's not going to take me outside. It does take a minute, um, but just know that it's working. So I'm going to click on home. So once it loads, you see the same screen that you saw when I was in the actual website. Um, at the top, I'm going to create a new one. 
So hit create. Here's where um, you'll, you can add different kinds of media. So you can upload something from your computer. Like I said before, I typically use just a PowerPoint slide. Um, you can also do pictures. You could do an audio recording of yourself um, or you know, some kind of video if you wanted students to watch it and then respond. So there's a lot you can do. Um, so I'm going to, I've already created one as an example of a discussion. So my computer I'm going to give it a title. You could also give a description. Um, I'm not. Here you can see that it added my slide. I only had one. If you wanted to add more, you could. You could click the add media icon. So I'm going to click back on my home icon. And you see it's been added to all the other ones that I have. I'm going to click on it. And now it's ready for students to engage with. The nice thing about it is once you have it ready to go, students can interact with it without having to um, log in or anything. So here's my discussion board um, or my, my prompt that I want them to respond to. They can still hover over. Here's where they're going to add their comments. Um, they click record, record it. It will ask them, do you want to save it? Do you want to edit it? You can do that. Um, and then they'll be prompted select okay yes and it will post um, on the left hand side all right so that's um, voice thread as a discussion board